That means for them to stop talking. <laughs> Good evening. I'd like to call the Lake Forest City Council meeting of May the 7th, 2013 to order. And roll call. I'd like for it to be noted that the, the Mayor, Scott Voigt, has an excused absence. Adam Nick, could you lead us in the invocation? Thank you. And I'll be more than happy to. Um, truth be told, um, I am very much humbled and honored uh, to be doing this, but I was thinking this morning, who am I to give you a word of inspiration? You folks are the ones who have inspired me, and if you're too young, perhaps your parents. Over the last 30 some odd years, you've been my family when I had no family here in America. So, you have inspired me. You're the reason I am who I am to a great extent. Um, to a great extent, I have what I have, uh, whether in, edu in education, whether in finance, whatever it is. Whatever it is I have, to a great extent, I owe it to you. People, people here in Lake Forest and Americans uh, in, a, in a broader spectrum. I will take that to my grave and I will always be grateful to you. And again, if it's not you and you're too young, then it would be your parents, your brother, your neighbor, fellow Americans. As we gather this evening on behalf of all who live in the city, I wish for us to be granted, may we be granted, the serenity to accept the things we cannot change, the courage to change the things we can, and the wisdom to know the difference. I wish for us to draw, may we draw, may we draw wisdom and strength from one another and treat everyone with dignity and respect. Be dedicated to the best interests of the community and bring civility to our deliberations and to our actions. And see the challenges facing the community truly and make decisions that will render it even more beautiful. Thank you. I'd like to ask Council Member Dwight Robinson to lead us in the pledge. You'd stand and join me in the pledge to our uh, country and our flag. Thank you. City Attorney, is there anything to report from closed session? Uh, there was no reportable action taken, uh, Madam Mayor Pro Tem. Okay. I'd like to back up a little bit for you that are prayer, praying people. Uh, the Mayor will entertain your prayers. Please keep him in your prayers that he have a speedy recovery. Presentations. Opposition. Motion carries. I have two proclamations, and uh, I think Tom Wilder is going to meet me. And uh, one I'm going to present, I'm going to take these out of order, and I'm going to, uh, I'm going to do them backwards. I'm going to do the presentation for the municipal clerk's week first. She can't leave her post, but I can leave mine. <laughs> She thought she got out of this. You know better than that. You know better. 
as much work as the clerk's office do to keep us on track. And she thought I was going to just let her have a private. You know that was wrong. On behalf of the city council and all of other staff and everyone that you keep on track, <laughs> we're giving you through the proclamation for municipal clerk's week. Who's got the camera? Take her picture. <laughs> we can't leave here, but you can come to her. Come on. If I may, Madam Mayor Pro Tem, uh, we have actually with us one of our uh, top performing contractors that I'd like to receive the, uh, if, if I may, uh, here tonight to receive the award. We have his landscaping. If um, Greg and Walter want to come up, they would be more than happy to receive the, uh, the uh, proclamation for Public Works Week. Nieves Landscaping provides our landscaping for our passive parks. The last three years, or over the last few years, they've also provided uh, landscaping services for various other parts of the city. Oh, me too. Huh? <laughs> National Public Works Week. Yes. Didn't the Public Works Department also get some additional hardware recently? Oh, you didn't tell I'm glad me. you mentioned that. Mm -hmm. We are the proud recipients of the American Council of Engineering Companies, the 2013 Award of Excellence for Alton Parkway Extension, one of our many awards for our award-winning new extension of Alton Parkway. Yeah, in fact, if I recall correctly, that's the third award that Alton yes. Parkway Extension has That is the third award. It's been a number of, uh, of good lunches. I was thinking more along the line of being able to accomplish a very difficult project. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And it's brought tremendous transportation improvements to the city, but apparently you focused on lunch, so okay, I'll go with it. <laughs> I'll remember the that the next time Public Works Week comes up. <laughs> Oh, that may not be nice. <laughs> <laughs> hey, back down to business. Uh, report from the student liaison. Come on up. I understand you have a lot of things tonight. <laughs> Good evening, Mayor and Council. The 2013 school year is finally wrapping up, and the El Toro Chargers are finishing strong. Students in the Honors Program are studying hard to pass their AP and IS. My Cheer is working hard daily to make sure this year's performance will be a show to remember. And head track coach Rick Hagen finished off his final track season here at El Toro by leading both girls and boys varsity track to victory at the Sea View League Championships on Friday. This was the first time since 1978 that both girls and boys track have won the title of Sea View League Champions in the same year. Congratulations, El Toro Track, and a huge congratulations and thank you to Coach Rick Hagan for his outstandingly successful coaching career here at El Toro. That's all for tonight, and as always, go Chargers. Thank you. This is a time for public comments. There will be a couple other times that the public is able to weigh in on what's going on. At public comment, this is when, <coughs> for anything that is not on the agenda, you will have three minutes at the mic. The green light will come on when you state your name and the city. You do not need to give us the numbers. And 
the yellow light will come on when you have one minute. Please finish up. When, uh, try and finish up so when the red light come on, I'll ask you to stop. Thank you. Do we have any speaker requests? Yes, we do, Madam Mayor. The first speaker is Gregory Sprague, followed by Tom Rath. Good evening. Good evening, Mayor Pro Tem. Uh, I thought Mayor Voigt would be here, and I left him some pictures up there. Uh, apparently, you people don't really listen to the, the public because I would like to get rid of about 80% of you because I think you're just an anchor on this city. You spend a lot of money. The pictures, I was in Atlanta last week. I took some pictures of their sidewalks, which are bad. But the third picture down, you can cut out a little five by five foot section and put pebbled bricks in there. And then my other complaint is the money you spent, and there's the person that had to sign it, is the city attorney. The money you spent and waste squandered on all that cement, which I have pictures in the unnecessary cement, I have marks on the pictures, 25 feet, I don't understand it. Then I went around and counted 14 cracks in the work, some in the street. What do we get? We elected you people. No, I, I did not elect any of you people, take my word. But the other little problem I had is that skate park. I'd like to know who owned that worthless piece of property and sold it to you gullible people because that skate park, where's their home? You have Home Depot, you have the nursery, you have hotels. There's nowhere to park. You people are not good, uh, I can't think of the word I want for when you're in charge of the trust. He would know it. Fiduciary, you're not good fiduciaries because someone is partying. And like Mr. Herzog said, it's the free lunches. I believe there's been a lot of free lunches. Thank you. Thank you. Tom Rath, followed by Lynette Stewart. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Tom Rath. Uh, I've been a Lake Forest resident for about 11, 12 years now. And uh, over the past years, where the city of Lake Forest has been a member of the uh, TCA board for the uh, Foothill Eastern Transportation Committee. Uh, they've showed a very strong support and a very active support with the TCA. But over the last uh, four or six months, that support seems to have disappeared and I'm just curious why. Out of the last four regular scheduled board member or board meetings for the TCA that I've been to, Lake Forest has only been represented at one of those four meetings. And here we are a third of the percent through the year and I'm just shocked that uh, Lake Forest support for the uh, toll road has disappeared at such a critical stage for uh, extending the uh, Tesoro extension and uh, pursuing all the uh, jobs that go along with that construction project. Thank you. City Attorney, I'd mm -hmm. like to make a brief comment. Sure, go ahead, you can do that. Uh, I'll stay within the 30 seconds. Uh, I am the alternate on TC, and I have been to five of those meetings with five different meetings there within, uh, what, four and a half weeks, and I have another one this Thursday. Uh, so I don't know what happened before, but I have been, I am alternate, and as the alternate, when the uh, designated person can't make it, I do make it, and I did vote on the t uh, 241 extension. I was there, and I was briefed, and I read all the paperwork. Thank you. Lynette Stewart, followed by Marsha Rudolph. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen of the council and Madam Mayor Pro Tem. My name is Lynette Stewart. I moved to Lake Forest in 1985. Um, I'm going to change the tone a bit. I'm here to talk about geese. <laughs> 
I work off of Muralins, and for the past five years, there have been at least two families of geese that have been nesting either on the water treatment side or on the mobile home side. Um, I actually have photos and I actually have a video from 45 minutes ago of myself helping them cross the road. They cross the road often. Um, occasionally they get hit when they get to the age where they look like full-grown geese, but they can't fly yet. People assume they're going to take off and they don't, which requires you guys to send animal control out and clean it up. It's a danger to motorists. Um, people don't know that they're coming. So I'm actually here to just sort of request um, a goose crossing sign in both directions on Muralins between Lake Forest and um, Bake. Uh, and if you want to see video or photos, I can do that. I don't know what the proper procedure is. So thank you very much for listening. You can give that to our staff right there on the end. Marsha, Marsha Rudolph, followed by Jim Gardner. Marsha Rudolph, former mayor of the city of Lake Forest. Um, number one, I want to make sure that I have time to get in a happy Mother's Day to all of the moms and that it's a reminder uh, to those who are not moms to make sure that they get a hold of their moms and, and do something appropriate. Um, okay. Quick report on vector control. The vector of the month is the biting stable fly. And though this does not cause much of a health hazard, it is an annoyance. And it can lead to some you know, pretty nasty bites. So um, particularly as we have our, um, our, our horses and um, the stables around. Um, hopefully, we can. If if the uh, owners of those uh, establishments need to get a hold of vector control, they can and get some suggestions as to how to handle these critters because they can be, if not annoying, they can be troublesome. Secondly, um, I attended the Restoration Advisory Board meeting, and yes, we are still meeting. Um, after all these years, it's over 120 meetings that we've had since the beginning, since the, the, the base was declared um, surplus and then had to close. And um, the issues still continue to be the Site 1 landfill, which is the old uh, ordinance disposal area. And um, that's right up next to the 241 at the top of the city. Um, there's still some discussion as to how they're going to remediate um, the remainder of the issues. And in um, August, there will be a site tour. So anyone who's interested in that site tour, um, it usually commences right about dusk. We go up, we tromp around, you have a chance to to see the fairy shrimp ponds and to get an idea as to what the Navy has planned for the particular site and also to ask questions as to what's going on with the um, FBI and their tenancy on parcels, parcels of the base. And with that, don't forget your moms. Thank you. Jim Gardner, followed by Mike Balsamo. Good evening, Mayor Pro Tem, Council Members, and Staff Members. Uh, I have two things I wanted to discuss. The first thing was, uh, as you know, I'm on the board. My name is Jim Gardner. I don't know if I said that. Uh, I'm on the board of Lake One, and on behalf of the Garden Club, we'd like to invite everybody, and that's everybody, to our annual uh, sale from this Saturday from 8.30 to 11 o'clock. It's kind of a pre-Mother's Day. Uh, lots of people shop there. Uh, terrific bargains on plants. There's a wide variety of plants and all kinds of things. Uh, you need to get there pretty early because the really good things sell out pretty fast. So that's in our parking lot in Lake One on Ridge Route from 8.30 to 11 Saturday. And that's the Lake Forest Garden Club. And I hope you'll be there. If you get there early enough, uh, you may get me carry your plants. So <laughs> that'll be a treat for some of you. <laughs> One. <laughs> uh, the other thing I wanted to bring to your attention, because I know some of you don't read the patch at all, and I know for the rest of you today's a busy day, so you probably haven't been up on the patch. So it just turns out I did some research that's on the patch today, 
and I have a document that I sent out that hopefully you have. And uh, it's just coming out of nowhere, but it happens to be some research that I did today. It's about the lawyers look at me tapping his pen. It shows that our percent of the annual operating budget allocated to legal services for ten South Orange County cities, we are the number one uh, use payer of legal services. Our legal bills far. Uh, uh, exceed anybody else's. Uh, the average amount of for legal services budgeted is about a half a million, dollars and we budget a million one hundred thousand dollars. So I'm not saying there's necessarily anything to do with that. I'm not complaining about it necessarily, but I think that's an interesting fact and something to keep in the back of your minds as we go forward, and particularly with a strategic review. So it's just some information for you to absorb. Thank you very much for your time. Mike Balsamo. Good evening, Mayor Pro Tem McCullough and Council Members. I'm Mike Balsamo with the Building Industry Association, Orange County Chapter. Uh, we represent over a thousand member companies and 100,000 employees involved in the business of home building. Our mission is to champion housing as the foundation of vibrant and sustainable communities. And I'm, I'm not here tonight on any agenda item in particular. I just wanted to um, introduce myself to you again. Some of you remember me as I was a, I'm an alumni of the city from 94 to 97. I was a planner here in the city of Lake Forest in the early, early days. But in January, I became the chief executive officer at BIA, and uh, I'm real proud to be there. We've got a great organization, and we're really excited about the city of Lake Forest and the opportunity to come related to your opportunity study, and um, really thinking that in 2014, you're going to see a lot of construction happening here at the city. Uh, we stand by as an information resource for the council on uh, planning matters, land use related matters, anything building related. Uh, please feel free to give us a call. We're happy to help. So once again, thanks for your support. I'm really uh, happy to see how the city has grown and prospered uh, in the time since I left. And have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you. We've had no further requests. Is there anyone that did not put in a request would like to speak? Seeing none, bringing it back to council. <clears throat> this is one of the, uh, the additional times that you have the opportunity to speak. Uh, this is the consent calendar warrant list, agenda item six. And on this matter, if you if you do not pull anything off this agenda item, we will approve them all in one sweep. Is there any request to speak? We've had no requests. Council. It's been moved and second. Any opposition? Motion carries. That's including. We're all we oh, we're moving fast tonight. For two discussion items, which you should be on item number twelve. Did I miss something? Miscellaneous consent oh. calendar. I'm trying to move it too fast. Let's back up. This is one of the, the what's the fourth uh, opportunity you have to speak on the miscellaneous consent calendar. If you do not pull, just as before, we will approve them in all one sweep. First, the public. Do we have any any uh, requests to speak? We've had no requests. Nothing to pull. And council. Oh, hold on. Hold on. been first and second. Is there any opposition? Motion carries. Now, this. Agenda item 12, a five-year strategic plan review submitted by city manager. City manager. Uh, Madam Mayor, pro tem members of the council, <clears throat> as, as unfortunately as, as uh, Mayor of Voights could not make this evening and, and he did express a, a, a distinct interest in this item uh, and the council did continue it from your last meeting to this meeting in, in view of the fact that the mayor cannot be here. Uh, I believe it is his desire that it be continued again. A staff's recommendation would be that this item be continued uh, to the budget workshop uh, of the city council that is scheduled uh, for next week actually on May 14th. And you can combine that uh, this item uh, with the uh, review of the, of the city's uh, budgets uh, and, and accomplish it at that point. Is there any opposition to that? I'll 
then oh we have a, a speaker request we have received one request to speak from Jim Gardner on this okay um, where's Jim Jim do you want to wait into the budget or you want to uh, speak now you know I'm here truly want to be here so it will come back it's going to go to the budget shop and then it will come back before council also so you can speak now and then the other two times or you can wait whichever one you want I'll give it your give you the option of your pleasure okay don't forget state your name and city thank you madam mayor pro tem council uh, staff my name is Jim Gardner I live here in Lake Forest uh, I've been involved in strategic planning for about four decades uh, I've been involved with it at the university level the public service level been involved in businesses as diverse as construction media banking marketing charting obscene <laughs> prices for doing that uh, and I've done it in my own business um, I wouldn't call myself an expert strategic planning but I've probably either led or engaged in 40 or 50 strategic planning sessions during that 40-year career uh, my recommendations to you about strategic planning are uh, and I'm not going to go into the details of that for which three minutes is not possible but I have two major recommendations based on having done this for 40 years for 40 years in about four, it's about once a year. It doesn't actually work out that way. But um, number one is uh, nearly half of you are new when you count the commissions uh, as well as the council. So I think so many of you are new that it's really worthwhile for you to do a brand new strategic planning. I don't see with that much turnover that you really should be involved in cutting and pasting from the old. Um, from the old strategic uh, plan. It's not only that you're new, but if you haven't noticed it yet, there's a different philosophy being promoted, uh, I think, at the commissions as well as the council. So I think rather than sitting on this thing, which is two years old and may not represent uh, the views of the councils and the commissions as they're constituted now, you better served yourselves by starting the process all over again. Obviously, you build on that document because there's a lot of good things in that document I'm not saying the document is, is a bad document but I think you want to think about doing your own thing uh, the second thing I have to recommend to you is that it not be done in-house uh, almost I can't remember I've been trying to remember if I ever saw strategic planning in done done in-house I never have uh, there's reasons for that one is the skills it's a skill set and the skills necessary to do it are necessarily in-house the other thing is that in many of the staff here know that I've praised them. On the other hand, staff may very well be part of your problem. So having the staff lead strategic planning seems like a self-serving thing. They may have vested interests. They may not see outside the box. In fact, the reason you are the way you are is because of the staff. So when you're doing something like strategic planning, it's really good to have an outside person come in. It's even good to do it in an outside place to kind of to a whole new thing so in without you know belittling or even criticizing the report that's there I think you might consider a different way of doing it thank you very much is there any other requests to speak we've had no further requests is there anyone that desire to address this issue tonight uh, would like to speak and address it if not bringing it back to council I need to entertain a motion to uh, carry this over first and second and any opposition motion carries <coughs> agenda item 13 potential modifications to the city's temporary signage and promotion procedures and live entertainment regulations submitted by assistant city manager and the director of development services city manager madam mayor pro tem members of the council as with the pre and this was actually uh, an item that had been requested by the mayor and in view of that uh, it would be uh, our recommendation that, that again since he is absent this evening to continue the item uh, but in this instance it would be to the next regularly scheduled meeting of the City Council is there any request to speak Jim Gardner once again Jim 
Are you going to waver on that? Okay. Bringing it back. Is there anything else? Everybody wavers. Bringing it back to council. Move it to the next regularly scheduled city council meeting. It's been moved. And second. Any opposition? Motion carries. Agenda item 14. Agenda item 14, legislative and regulatory matters submitted by city manager. Madam Mayor Pro Tem, members of the council, the, the staff has nothing further to add than what was in your uh, staff report. We'd be glad to answer any questions that you might have. Anyone choose to address any? I know you did, Peter. I, I just asked just because it's procedure. <laughs> Yeah, um, the, the staff highlighted Assembly Bill 667. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, as often is the case with the state legislature, there are things buried at the end of the bill. And, and unfortunately, what's going on both in this bill as well as AB or SB 673, uh, there's things at the end that actually, to me, are the worst parts of the bill. Um, we've just had a tremendous decision uh, yesterday from the Supreme Court highlighting the need for local control over land use uh, and how that is a, a right under the Constitution for local governments and that that should, is held to a very high standard. If the legislature is trying to undermine uh, the abilities of cities and counties to control that land use, and they do it in a very underhanded way, um, there's a technical term uh, that is sometimes used in state law to try to separate out uh, the ability of local government to control its destiny. Uh, and, and that phrase is that it is an issue of statewide concern. And that has meanings within various legal interpretations in the state of California. And unfortunately, in these two bills, at the very end of both bills, uh, they use the phrase that uh, the legislature finds and declares that what the bill, then they have a brief description of the bill, is a matter of statewide concern and not merely a municipal affair. Both these bills deal with local land use decisions. And so what we see happening in the state legislature is an effort to remove local control and make land use a matter of statewide concern, which if that is a process and a policy that is adopted that will dramatically change local government. And in fact, uh, the cities here in the in the fifth district in South County were formed in the late 80s and 90s specifically to take over control of our own destiny. Uh, and this phrase that's in these bills and is creeping up in other bills is would absolutely basically go against the entire concept of the why we incorporated in the first place as well as go against the constitutional aspects of why local government should be involved in land use and only local government. So um, I would suggest that on Assembly Bill 667 that we actually oppose this bill uh, and for a variety of reasons, but in particular this effort that is in um, Section D uh, of that bill and in Section G of 667 uh, where they're trying to emasculate local control. Uh, and additionally, uh, we can take the position on 667 uh, unless people would like to read the bill further. Um, but uh, either way, either put that bill on our next meeting agenda, and I would suggest an opposed position, or we can take that position this evening. Uh, but that is something I think we need to be concerned about. I think we need to direct our, our legislative advocate uh, to search all bills for things buried at the end that have this kind of phraseology and any bill uh, that goes toward this effort should be opposed regardless of the nature of the rest of the bill. And again, that's because really land use is really the core of what makes local government uh, responsible to people and it's the core of why these cities were formed here in Orange County and it's really the core of what we do and I'd hate to see that stripped away um, by Sacramento of all places. Uh, colleagues? If that's a motion, I'll definitely second. Uh, probably 90% of what gets approved at, in Sacramento I, I'm opposed to, and I think the vast majority of our residents are. And so for that reason, you know, a absolutely no question about it. Just the, the core topic with respect to this issue, I don't support. And the language that uh, Councilman Herzog was discussing specifically that's 
more general to it, a number of bills, um, I couldn't agree with him more. So uh, if, if that's a motion, I second it. Okay. It's been moved and second. Is there any discussion, Nick? Uh, okay. Any opposition? Motion carries. Agenda item 15, <laughs> request for appointment, League of California Cities, Association of California Cities, Orange County, and or the Orange County City Selection Committee, submitted by the city clerk. Peter, are you up on your left hook? I'm already you, You're not, okay, you're in the middle. Uh, I have a uh, um, 2020, what's the name for the 2020? End homelessness. Yeah, ending homelessness by 2020. The 2020 Commission and the Orange County Housing Authority Commission, I, w I have already reapplied and I will be uh, running to retain that. I'm already the chair of one and, s and I'm already seated on the other. So I'm just trying to stay on that. Is there anything else? Anybody else running for anything? Uh, do you happen to know if um, it's plans on uh, taking over your spot? Um, as mayor in the remote access network board, since the uh, mayor, he can't just uh, he can't just take it over. He has okay. to be voted in. But yeah. I'll rem I'll, but I'll remind him that he can. There is probably about three or four people in line. Okay. But uh, between the two of us, we need to notify him about it. Okay. Because it doesn't go that way. It's it, uh, you're voted in that by at, at large all the, okay. the mayors. Got it. All right. And you could only be a mayor. There is a person that is the alternate <coughs> for that, and you have to have an alternate too. So. <coughs> oh, we don't need a vote on that. Just moving along. City manager, do you have anything tonight? I have nothing further this evening, Madam. Thank you, Councilmember Herzog. Uh, very quickly, uh, as was. At the outset, there was a presentation about Public Works Week, and then the skate park was mentioned a little later on. And actually, the skate park was another one of the marvels of our Public Works uh, Department that we brought forward in the city. It was actually a partnership. Uh, Bank of America provided the land. The company Etnies provided the design that work and, and a lot of other uh, additional information, which is very difficult to explain. Uh, skate park world is, is, a, is a little different uh, and working with professional skateboarders is very interesting. Yes. Uh, and then of course the, the city of Lake Forest and uh, that park has developed into a world renowned uh, park that's been in every skateboard magazine in the world as well as on all the, all the various te television stations so seeing that it's uh, public works week uh, and there was the interest in highlighting the skate park, skate, skate park I'm glad to do that. Uh, and it continues to have uh, very good crowds and a lot of very interesting programs there for the city uh, as well as a variety of other people. Uh, also, I just note that uh, on the uh, economic development side, the city did receive another award, uh, and that was from the um, California Association of Local Economic Development, uh, and there it was for uh, what we do with commercial brokers, uh, and that is that we have a program uh, where we uh, work with the commercial pro brokers and actually outreach to them as well as providing a website that lists all of the various uh, commercial areas that are uh, able to lease or purchase. So we have a very interactive program with the commercial brokers and the commercial industry uh, and that uh, program did receive an award uh, from the California Association of Local Economic Development. So congratulations. And with that I have nothing further. A, a PS on that, if you let me. Well, at the big annual conference uh, uh, in uh, Palm Desert, uh, we were honored there with the other cities that got awards first for various things. Adam Nick. I just want to thank you all for being here. I thank the staff and I thank my colleagues. I wish everybody a great evening. Thank you. Councilmember Robertson. Uh, it's been, I think, about three weeks since our last meeting, and uh, I've been able to attend a number of community events. And just want to commend our community. I think that we have a, a great number of people who volunteer. It's what makes Lake Forest such a great place. Um, I, I had the opportunity to attend uh, the Foothill Kids Foundation uh, fundraiser up in Foothill Ranch a couple of weeks ago. Uh, incredible turnout. 
Uh, they raised a lot of money. Um, the school districts are, are suffering financially, mostly related to state issues and <laughs> how money's being spent and so forth. And uh, they were able to raise a lot of money for technology for the kids in the schools there. Uh, great turnout, great community spirit. Um, had the opportunity to uh, to attend our um, senior uh, award luncheon that was in this room. Uh, a lot of great seniors in town who they, they seem to have such an incredible camaraderie. Um, they get along so well. They have a lot of fun. Um, <laughs> they're probably they probably have more fun in their day than I do. And uh, you can just tell that it's a great group of people. And uh, just the things that they do in town, um, everything from stars to just helping out in a variety of different ways. Um, very appreciative. Um, had a chance to attend both a, a Girl Scouts and a Boy Scouts, their their top awards, so an Eagle Scout award and, and gold and silver awards for uh, Girl Scouts. And I don't want to steal uh, uh, Mayor Pro Tem McCullough's uh, thunder here, so I'm sure she'll talk more about it. But incredible young people here in town that you know are doing amazing things and are going to be uh, terrific leaders um, in, in the future. And so really appreciate that. And then uh, getting back to this weekend, Rancho Fiesta Days, and all the docents that work at Heritage Hill, um, like a said it at the beginning here just we have a tremendous amount of people who love our community who love to volunteer i love to see that i want to see more of it um see us all just encourage more of that in town and uh, that's all i want to leave with you tonight appreciate your time and have a good evening you left me a whole bunch <laughs> first of all before i started you can hold off uh being that i'm a docent have been for years they asked me to come and receive our city's award. And the mayor's not here, so I'm just going to give it to all of us. Uh, as a lifetime member, we have supported Heritage Hill ever since uh, it's been up there, ever since we've been a city, because I think we put that up there before we were a city. Uh, but ever since we've been a city, we have supported Heritage Hill, and we received a lifetime award. So I'm going to leave it here. It goes in our, our little thing. Okay. And first of all, as earlier, I, re I have attended five TCA. They have a lot of special meetings and meetings on top of meetings. And, and uh, I have one Thursday also. And, and um, I was uh, able to be there, and, and I had gotten the paperwork and, and debriefed and everything. And able, I was already in touch with it. I try to keep a board. And we uh, did the final okay for the 241. Uh, I know I'm stepping on Peter's toes for the 241 completion widening. Uh, it was it was unanimous there, and they had a lot of people there that was very supportive of it. It's going to be a little messy around uh, San Juan area for a little bit, but when it's over, you're going to be real happy. <coughs> Excuse me. Also, I attended the League of California Cities uh, meeting. They have it quarterly now. And uh, it was at a beautiful, beautiful art gallery in Brea, and there. Uh, it, I, I'm hoping one day we'll have some fine arts here in the city. I tend to special needs, and special needs has hired a new taxi company to take over. So we've we're having some uh, not growing pains yet. We're just trying to make sure it's a seamless operation. Some of the old drivers will be incorporated in, and also we have. Um, Several of the ones that that like age well, and there's Absalon and others that does the mobilities for the seniors that are having financial troubles. As you know, the tobacco money is running down, and so we're going to have to find some new money to backfill that. Um, I also had a special we had special meetings for the fire authority and a meeting uh, concerning the OSOR. We had to uh, take care of that. That's about the the. Uh, unfunded mandates and stuff, unfunded gaps in the monies and a lot of technical stuff. Um, we did have the, the, we had the boys one Sunday, the, the uh, Boy Scouts Sunday before last and then this Sunday, we, no, the girls Sunday before last and then the boys and uh, you know I like to get everybody involved and, and uh, Dwight, we did it together because I call him up and have him help me. I feel they need to know that we're in unity. And uh, the T, the uh, the award was given to us at the T and SCAG. We were featured at SCAG, and also our county on the renewing of our major M too was featured. Uh, also, I attended the parade committee. I 
had to bring my mother up, so I got a chance to attend the parade committee. They are well organized. If you've never been involved, you need to get involved. And uh, mental health. We've got a lot of things going on in mental health. Uh, because of all the suicides and killings and stuff, they featured uh, suicides. And I understand that uh, Pastor Ward is going to be doing a big thing on suicide. Hopefully they fold the mental health in. We have a lot of things pertaining there. And the mental health seem like to be the only people that steady get more and more money. They're getting ready to get another big pot of money. So if there's any builders that want to put some mental health units in their project, mental health is still have monies to put into projects. Uh, but we are expanding some other programs and enfolding in the families, training families how to recognize uh, the symptoms on a person that commits suicide. We have classes, uh, workshop classes every other time. And uh, anyone that's interested in mental health uh, from cradle to grave is what we take care of. Um, please uh, let us know. We can give you you can contact the city. They have the time and date. It's the first Monday. It's an all-day thing, but every first Monday of the month, uh, singer, singer luncheon. Um, and I want to make sure that I tell everyone, if you do not have a mother, find a mother, somebody's mother. You know, I, I, some of you are old enough to remember the song, if you can't, if you, uh, can't get love from the, one, the uh, one you want, get it from the one you're with. Find somebody's mother to be kind to. If you are a mother, insist on your family being kind to you this Mother's Day. Because all the rest of the time, mothers is taking care of all of the rest of you. And if you got children, remind those children you have nine months seniority on fathers and everyone else to be kind to you this Mother's Day. So I bid all the mothers a happy Mother's Day. And the meeting is adjourned. <laughs>